This is the Quartz 64 Model A. It's a single board computer made by Pine64, the same company behind the Pinebook Pro. For quite some time, I've been using this as a power efficient but fairly basic home server, and for applications like Jellyfin, Nextcloud, Pihole, and even a small Minecraft server, it does a phenomenal job. Now this video is not a review of the Quartz 64, it's not a product designed for the masses, so this video isn't to determine whether you should buy it or not. It's mostly just a video of me experimenting to see what it can do. But before we get into that, let's have a look at the specs. Now this is the Model A. The Model B has the same system on a chip, but it has different I.O. and unlike the Model A, which is quite large, the Model B is more like the size of a Raspberry Pi. So for the system on a chip, we have a Rockchip RK3566, which consists of four ARM Cortex A55 cores, not to be confused with the much more powerful RK3588. So it's similar in performance to a Raspberry Pi 4, it's not quite as fast, but it's very close. It's available with either 4 or 8GB of RAM. I went with 8GB because I'm rich, but you could probably get away with 4GB for most applications. The Model B is only available with 4GB. For the GPU, we have a Mali G52. There's no built-in storage, but you can use either a microSD card or an eMMC module. Older versions of the board used to have a SATA port, but newer versions no longer have it due to signaling problems. I wish Pine64 made this a bit more obvious though, because the Pine64 store still shows the old version. Now what makes this SBC, or in fact most SBCs different from a regular computer, is the fact that it has an ARM CPU. ARM CPUs are the standard for things like smartphones and tablets, while x86 CPUs, manufactured by Intel and AMD, are the standard on the desktop. I'm not going to get into all the differences between x86 and ARM, but what you need to know is they are different instruction sets. In other words, they speak a different language. This means that a program written for x86 will not run on ARM unless it's specifically compiled for ARM, or you use emulation, and vice versa. Okay, so why bother with ARM when an x86 computer can run x86 applications natively? Well, besides the fact that I like a challenge, there are also benefits to ARM over x86, and the main one is power efficiency relative to performance which is why they're slowly becoming an attractive option for laptops and servers, where power consumption is quite important. So the first part of the adventure was picking out an operating system. Most of the videos about this SPC showcase people running Android, but I personally didn't want to run Android. I wanted to run Linux, as in desktop Linux. There are a few distros that support the Core 64, but most of them had problems from my testing. For example, Ambient seemed to run okay at first, and I was even able to set my display's refresh rate to 144Hz, but it was constantly freezing. I later found out there's a problem where the OS can only detect one core and two gigabytes of RAM, which could explain why that was happening. Eventually I settled on using Plebeian, which is basically just Debian, and this seemed to be the best option. It's also possible to install NetBSD, but you have to install Tianocore UEFI firmware to a microSD card and then install NetBSD to another storage medium. I'm going to talk about this in more detail later. The next part of the adventure was getting a GUI. According to the Debian wiki, the Panfos driver for the onboard GPU doesn't run well with X11, so in order to get any form of graphics acceleration, you have to use Wayland. So I decided to use the Sway compositor. I've played with Hyperland before, but I'd never used Sway, but I was quite pleased to know that it's very similar to i3, as I'm an i3 user myself and the experience of using Sway is very snappy overall, which is nice. So what's it like for general computing? Well, it depends on the kind of software you're running, but overall it's decent. I would suggest sticking to native apps and command line tools where possible though. Now most of the free software you're used to on Linux is also available on ARM. That's one of the benefits of free software. For emails, I would suggest using Geary. You can use Thunderbird, but Geary is a fair bit lighter. For the browser, I found Chromium tends to work the best, but you can also use Firefox, and I would also suggest installing an ad blocker. I personally use uBlock Origin. General web browsing works fine. It's not as snappy as a regular computer, but it's 100% usable. You can even watch YouTube on this thing, but I would suggest using Invidious, which is a third-party YouTube client. LibreOffice works fairly well, although I wish it were a bit snappier. Though for plain text editing, I prefer to just use Vim or a simple GUI text editor. VS Codium has a build for Linux on ARM, but unless you need a feature that's specific to VS Code slash VS Codium, it makes more sense to just use Vim or Emacs. Discord doesn't have an official build for ARM, 
But there are some unofficial flat packs, which are basically just versions of the web client wrapped up to feel like a desktop app, WebCord being one of them. Now, let's answer the burning question, can it game? Well, this thing isn't designed for gaming, but I kinda went down a rabbit hole just to see what it could run. Starting off with some basic 3D FOSS games, I tried Extreme Tox Racer at 1024x768, and it seemed to hit a consistent 60fps with some occasional micro stutters. Now for a lot of these games I can't actually verify the FPS, I'm mostly judging the FPS by how smooth the game feels. At 720p, Freedom runs at a silky smooth 60fps and the same can also be said about Quake. Next I tried Quake 3 Arena, at 720p with the low settings, we average around 45 to 50 fps with highs in the 70s and lows in the 30s. Open Arena is a fork of Quake 3 Arena, but the performance is not great. At sub 720p resolution and lower settings, we're only getting about 30 fps. At 720p low, 0 AD is quite slow, but I would say it's somewhat playable because it's not a fast paced game like an FPS or a platformer, and I managed to get a somewhat smooth experience by lowering everything as low as it can go. This thing can run a Minecraft server, but can it run Minecraft itself? Well, I tried running the Java edition of Minecraft, but that was a complete fail. However, Minecraft Pi Edition runs very well at 720p. You can't do a whole lot in Minecraft Pi Edition, but technically yes, you can play Minecraft on this machine. Next I wanted to try some emulation. NES emulation with Nestopia runs very well, but I mean, it's the NES, it can literally run on anything. I tried some N64 emulation with Simple64, but I think I was pushing my luck a bit too far. Although I don't think the problem is the hardware, because ETA Prime managed to do some N64 emulation on Android. So the poor performance could just be a lack of optimization, or maybe Simple64 just isn't a good emulator. One thing I didn't get to test on the Pinebook Pro was Box64. Essentially, this allows you to run x86-64 applications on ARM. I decided to compile Box64 myself for the best possible results. I first started with Space Cadet 3D Pinball. Yes, that old game pre-installed on Windows XP. Turns out there's an app image for it. And yeah, it works. I know it's not an intensive game at all, but I was impressed by the fact it even ran given that the binary was not made for ARM, so I knew Box64 was working. I also tried Serious Sam since it has a Linux app image. I wasn't able to play the game since I don't own the game and I couldn't find any files for the demo, but again, this is an AMD64 binary running on ARM. Now the big question with any device is can it run Doom? And yes, it can. DHEWM3 is a GPL source port of Doom 3. It doesn't run out of the box because you still have to legally own the game, but unlike Serious Sam, I actually have Doom 3 in my Steam library, so I just imported the game files from my main computer. I actually installed two different versions of the game. One was the pre-built binary. This is an x86-64 binary, so it uses box 64. However, you can also compile it manually, so I did that as well. Unsurprisingly, the version I compiled myself ran slightly better because it wasn't being emulated, but the fact that Doom 3 even runs on this thing just blows my mind honestly, although I could just have very low standards. In theory, you can run Half-Life on this machine, but I wasn't able to figure out how to do it. Next, I wanted to try OSU. Now, there are three main ways to run OSU on Linux. You can run the default Windows binary with Wine, you can run OSU Laser, which is available as an app image, or you can use OPSU, which is a third-party open source OSU client. I managed to get OPSU running through Lutris. There was no audio and I couldn't load any beatmaps, but it's pretty cool that it launched, eh? And finally, I wanted to see if I could run some fairly modern PC games. I couldn't get Wine or Box86 to work, so running anything on Steam was out of the question. I downloaded a bunch of free Linux compatible games from GOG, but only one of them worked. It's a game called Martial Law, and it actually seems like quite an interesting game, but unfortunately it was very slow. I also tried a game from Itch.io, Helltaker. This one actually ran pretty well. It wasn't super smooth, but definitely playable. To be clear, I'm not bringing any of this up to criticise the Quartz 64, because it wasn't designed for gaming, and even though some of these games aren't playable, I'm still really impressed because some of them were made for a completely different architecture. So yeah, Box64 is a pretty neat program. 
Now before I conclude the video, I just want to talk a bit about Tiano Core and external boot media. So much like the Pinebook Pro, the Quartz 64 doesn't have a traditional BIOS or UEFI, so you have to use images tailored for the Quartz 64's hardware. If you just flash a generic ARM64 ISO to the microSD card, it won't boot, and you also can't boot from external media. Tiano Core and U-Boot are both open source implementations of UEFI, similar to Toboot on the Pinebook Pro, and there are custom builds of them available for the Core 64. The Tiano Core image is primarily intended for people who want to install NetBSD, but in theory you could boot any generic UEFI ARM64 ISO. So I flashed Tiano Core to a different microSD card and managed to boot into the Gen 2 live environment from an external USB, though I didn't actually install Gen 2. Although this SBC doesn't come with a SATA port anymore, I was able to connect an SSD using this PCI to dual SATA adapter and have it recognized by the computer. Pine64 sell an adapter that can power a SATA drive, but I didn't have one on hand, so I just improvised by using an old power supply and connecting two pins which trigger the power supply to turn on, even when it's not connected to any computer hardware. This PCI slot honestly gives a lot of potential for this device. Maybe I'll do a part two, but for now, thank you for watching, and until next time, cheerio.